organization. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to pick up where we left off yesterday. Today, guys, the call might be a little bit shorter than normal just because there's not as many of us here, but I'm going to give you massive value in the time that we do have together. The purpose of the call is to make an appointment. Period. The end. Get the appointment. When we get in the appointment, we are, they're in our pipeline, they're in our follow-up system. And our standard is plus one per day or plus 250 um, over a 52-week year. Now, success is in the follow-up. And this is where I want to pick up the conversation from the last two days. When you go on the appointment, the purpose of the appointment is to create a foundation, build a relationship, look for opportunity, convey that you care about them, that they can trust you, and that you know what you're doing. Now, success is in the follow-up, and this is what we're going to talk about today. And slow down, and I'm going to go deep into this conversation. Day one, make a call. Shirley, thank you so much for meeting with me yesterday. I enjoyed meeting with you. And I just wanted to check in and see if you have any questions for me. That's the call. That's it. There is nothing else. Now send a handwritten personal note immediately. So they get the personal note within a day or two of meeting with you. The personal note is simple as well. Thank you for taking time out of your day to meet with me. I enjoyed our visit and I am looking forward to hopefully working with you soon. Make it a great day and sign your name. Use a Sharpie marker when you're writing inside that personal note. That way, especially if you write small, you don't have to worry about filling up that entire page. It'll fill up the page because you're using a marker. Now, it's a non-branded personal note. It's not Keller Williams. It's not you, Inc. It is a non-branded personal note. Your mom doesn't give you a birthday card from Mom, Inc. It's personal. Now, in the same week, I'm going to make my next call. And my next call is very similar to the first call. Clarissa, thank you again for meeting with, for meeting with me. And I just wanted to check in and ask, how are things going? Great. And are you getting lots of activity? What kind of feedback are you hearing? That's it, three questions. How are things going? Are you getting activity? What kind of feedback are you hearing? Now, those three questions could create a conversation. You might hear, I'm not getting as much activity as I thought I would. That's an opportunity to ask another question. What does a great buyer look like? Well, I think a great buyer is somebody who can afford my home. Yeah, I agree. And can I share with you what a great buyer looks like to me? A great buyer is someone who sold their home yesterday and they need to move into a home in the next 30 days. Or a great buyer is someone who is in town for the weekend to buy a home. Now, Clarissa, if you were that buyer, are you out driving around looking up for sell by owners or are you working with a professional like me? That might be the reason that you're not getting as much activity as you thought you would. Another question I could ask them is, tell me what you're doing to market your home. Listen to what they say. And then follow-up question. Are you familiar with what, sorry, are you familiar with what I do in order to market my listings in order to get them sold in the shortest period of time for the most amount of money? All right, it's three questions. How are things going? Are you getting lots of activity? And what kind of feedback are you hearing? Now, week two, make a call. Hey, Paige, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, following up as promised, just checking in, is your home still available? Yes. Have you had any offers? Um, yes, but they were too low. Okay. Just out of curiosity, hey, by the way, there's an opportunity. There's three questions. Let me just go ahead and give you the three questions on this call. 
Is your home still available? Have you had any offers? Are you doing an open house this coming weekend? Those are the three questions. Now, again, just like the last call, depending on their answers, you have an opportunity to have a conversation. Paige said, yes, I'm getting offers, but they're too low. Paige, just out of curiosity, your asking price is $500,000. What does too low look like? 450. Oof, ouch. Did you reject the offer or did you give them a counter offer? Oh, I just rejected it. Hmm. You know, just curious again, if they would have come up to 490, what would you do? I probably would take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you have countered the offer at 490? I guess I could have. Okay. Dropping bombs. You guys hear this? Okay. Are you doing an open house this weekend? Yes, I am. What are you doing to market that open house? How are you attracting buyers? Oh, I put signs around. All good. Can I share with you what we do to attract buyers to our open houses? Yes. Awesome. All right, next week, make another call. Now, this is all month one. I know that's writing is small and you can't really see that, but these are all month one calls. And the next week is very next week is a very similar conversation. Aaron John Dietz following up as promised. Is your home still available? Yes. Great. Have you had any offers? Um, nothing's in the Hmm. 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 Is a script. It's a script. Write it down. <laughs> Okay, Aaron, you know, you have an absolutely beautiful home and it's been three weeks. I know you told me you thought it would sell super quick. Just curious. Why do you think your home is still available? Um, I don't know. I had a lot of people walking by and calling me calls about it. Okay, all good. All right, we're through month, week two, week three. No, week two, week three, week four. Make another call. The fourth week is the same as the third week. I don't have to give you what the questions are because they're the same questions. Now we're moving into the second month. And now we're calling once a month. We're not calling every week. We're calling once a month, unless, unless you're talking to a seller who is ready, willing, and able to sell their home, which means unless you're talking to a seller who is motivated to get their home sold. And then it's gonna be a weekly call or an every other week call based on their motivation, but you're gonna just keep calling and you're gonna keep asking questions. And what we're looking for is we're looking for them to get to this point right here, which is at the moment they decide to get serious about selling their home, you're creating emotional proximity. And emotional proximity simply means that whoever stays closest to them is the one who's going to get the listing when they get serious about selling their home. It's no, 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 no. What would you do to sell my house? It's the same thing as if I go to Nordstrom's and I walk in the door and the salesperson greets me with, how can I help you? And my response is, I'm just looking. And their response is, cool. By the way, my name is John. Can I ask your name? And I'll be right over here folding clothes. If you need anything, I'm just a couple steps away. And then I come back every five or 10 minutes uh, and just check in. How are things going? Do you have any questions? I see that you're looking at suits. I just wanted to let you know that our Zinnia suits are on sale. They never go on sale. They're over here. And if, if I can help you with anything, I'm just a couple steps away. And then I come back and check again. And it's, I'm just looking, I'm just looking, I'm just looking. Do you have a dressing room that I can try this on? I reached this spot right here. Now I'm serious, I'm ready to buy. And whoever has created emotional proximity with me is the person who's going to get the sale. It's the same thing if I go look at cars. It's the same thing everywhere. The key to success is follow up.
The goal of follow-up is to create emotional proximity. And the way that we do that is by staying in curiosity, not getting in judgment, and following up forever regardless of what they say. Now, how long does this last? Forever? Until they sell their home or until they list their home. You're not going to stop, no matter what. They've raised their hand. They said they're interested in selling their home. And you're not going to stop calling until they sell it or until they list it. Now, eventually, this is going to get to a once a quarter call. I mean, after a year, you're not calling them every month. You're certainly not calling them every week. That's called stalking. <laughs> you're going to call them once a quarter. And now, once you've, been once you've been making calls for a long period of time, it's, hey, Clarissa, John Dietz, following up as promised. How are things going? They're going. Is there anything I can do for you today? That's it. That's it. How are things going? Is there anything I can do for you today? Don't you think she knows why I'm calling? <laughs> I've called a hundred times. I don't have to tell her, is your home still on the market? Have you had any offers? What kind of feedback are you hearing? She's tired of those questions. All she wants to hear from me now is, hey, it's John Dietz following up as promised. How are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you today? All right, now talk to me. I promised you it was gonna be short. That was it. Talk to me, ask me a question, give me an aha. Tell me why this won't work. Let's talk. Oh, I miss I missed something. So it goes from quarterly, it goes from monthly to quarterly after what time period? Okay, so let's, let's draw it out, Shirley. All right, that's the appointment. And I'm going to call twice in week one. So far, so good, right? Although my writing's not the greatest. That doesn't look like a one. There. Okay. I guess that's better. I'm going to call twice in week one. And then I'm going to call once every week for three weeks. Now, depending on their motivation, I'm going to either continue <laughs> I can't write and think at the same time. Plan A, I'm either going to continue to call weekly or twice a month or once a month depending on their motivation. Plan A is I'm calling weekly. That means they're motivated. Plan B is either twice a month or once a month. And I'm gonna do that for the next three months. Now I'm gonna go to once every three months after that. And this, is forever. So twice in the first week, once a week for the next three weeks, and then it's gonna continue once every week, depending on their motivation, or twice a month, depending on their motivation, or once a month for the next three months, and then it's once every three months. Surely, that I, did that answer your question? Cool. Now, how can you systematize this so that the 250 opportunities that you're putting into your pipeline because you're adding one every day, how can you systematize this so that 250 people are being followed up with in a systematic way so nobody falls through the cracks? It's one word, it starts with a C, ends with a D. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say smart plan. I was going to say smart plan. I was like, what is this? Yeah. 
You're giving me a hard time already. I'm on three hours of sleep. Don't give me a hard time today. Okay, so smart plan is, is correct as well. And I did hear a few smart plans. That is correct. Smart plan lives where? In command. In command. Tika. Tika's been with us for less than a week and she knew the answer. I've been watching your videos. She's been watching my videos. I love that. Uh, Kim, your hand is in the air. Talk to me. I'm guessing I didn't really have to raise my hand today. Not really. It's kind of a small group. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my aha from that is that, you know, I'm, I'm getting frustrated with these previews because people are selling their houses in this market still. We're still in a really strong market here. Um, but the reality is I'm really not following up to that degree. And I am following up forever, but I'm not following up enough in the beginning and too much on the back end. You got it. You nailed it. You nailed it. It's a recipe. Pay really close attention. If I leave one ingredient out of the recipe, is it going to be the same amazing, I don't know, pumpkin pie? If I'm making a pumpkin pie and I leave one ingredient out, like, is there sugar in pumpkin pie? Okay. If I don't put any sugar in it, what's it going to taste like? Ah. It's a recipe, Cam. You got to follow the recipe, every single ingredient. So I'm going to do it from now on. There you go. There you go. If NASA is building a rocket ship and they leave one bolt off that rocket, what's going to happen? It's going to blow up. Is that it? <laughs> Nobody else is talking. That's it. We're good. It's a wrap. It can be a wrap, by the way. All right. There's your follow-up plan. It's simple. The purpose of the call is to get the appointment. The purpose of the appointment is to build a foundation, to convey that you care about them, that they can trust you, that you know what you're doing. You're setting up the follow-up. That's the purpose of the appointment. Purpose of the appointment is to set up the follow-up. Now, follow-up is where success happens. Follow-up has to be systematic in order for it to work. And Kim, pay attention. You have to be unattached to the outcome. Focus on the activity and ignore the outcome. It's noise. Ignore the noise. I am good about the that. The Chinese person. bamboo tree doesn't get frustrated. It's just like, I'm growing. Five years from now, I'll be 50 feet tall. I know right now I'm still under the dirt, but eventually I'm going to be 50 feet tall. The Chinese bamboo tree doesn't say, screw this. It ain't working. I'm done. Sorry, Kim, go ahead. Oh, no, that's okay. It's a great reminder. I'm, I just said I'm good about that most of the time. And every once in a while, I get down. Oh, me too. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Yeah, you're like I am. All right, guys, it's Friday. I hope you got good value. Uh, that's it for today. We're still on flex time, so we're not going to have role play today. I hope that you got tremendous value. Uh, Tika, I know you came in a little bit late, but I recorded the entire thing, so you didn't miss anything. You could watch the recording. Probably shouldn't have told everybody that you were late. Sorry. <laughs> Still like me, right? Okay, she said yes. <laughs> All right, time to get to work. What is work? <sighs> work is 20 conversations, or it's 10, or it's five, whatever your standard is. It's care conversations, not sales conversations. Lead with gratitude. Bring value to the conversation. Focus on either getting an appointment, getting a referral, adding somebody new to your database, building a relationship. And follow up forever. That's work. Did my definition of what is work change for today? Yes, it did. And I'm keeping it simple. I just want you to focus on that and make it a great weekend, everybody.
Thank you, John. See everybody Monday morning. Three weeks till Santa Claus comes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. We're still celebrating Hanukkah, right? Okay, happy Hanukkah. There you go.